speak God. <laughs> That's what we're looking at. How God speaks to us, when God speaks to us, sometimes even why God speaks to us. Better that he does than he doesn't, and better that we seek to hear from him than we go about our own, oh, I don't know, our own ideas that we think that we're completely isolated from the creator of all, the God who made us, that we pretend and contend that this world and its ways is all there is. Personally for me, if I thought that this was the only life to live and that this was all there was, looking around, not knowing the Bible, then I'd be living in a state of despair and basically be out for myself to do my own thing and get my own will. But because God reveals himself and proves to each and every individual person that seeks him, he proves that he exists, then not only do we have a reason to not be so attached to this world because he's got something better for us, but to recognize that we have a purpose, we have a design, we have a plan to fulfill. And it's not all about us. And that's probably the most important thing for a Christian to learn. You aren't the most important person in the universe. God may love you. He may care for you. He may choose to have his son die for you, but as <laughs> much as I hate to put it bluntly, if you wind up going to hell, while everyone's going to regret it, the universe goes on without you. So, on the one hand, yes, you are very, very, I mean, way up there as far as importance is concerned to God. But on the other hand, if you're full of self-importance, God can operate just fine without you. You aren't his hands and feet. You are just privileged to be with him if you choose to follow him. So today, when pressures build up, are you living life in overdrive? Do you ever feel like running away, checking out, giving up? Life is filled with pressure, pressure, pressure. Pressure to be, pressure to do, pressure to perform, pressure to produce. And with the pressures come anxiety and stress, especially to the Christian who longs to be pleasing to God. Am I being the mate I should be? The parent I should be? Am I handling everything the way I ought to as his child? Life is so accelerated, hurrying to work, dashing to get the kids to their activities, running to prepare meals, rushing to get to church. You think you're going to slow down when the kids get back to school. Come winter, come Christmas, come summer, come vacation. But it doesn't happen. Rush, rush, rush. Or if you go slow, or if you do slow down, it's not for long. Pretty soon you're back at it again in overdrive. Just think about the new energy drinks we got. Now we're not in overdrive, we're in double overdrive. Realistically, life is never going to slow down. The pressure is never going to lessen. The stress will always be there in one form or another. So what are you gonna do about it? Tough it out until you break? Run into some ungodly escape hatch? Give up? Check out? Hide? Move? The good news is, you don't have to choose any of the above. God knows about the pressures, the stress, the anxiety, the accelerated pace of your earthly life. And he has provided a way of escape so that you'll be able to bear it. From 1 Corinthians 10, 13. It's all wrapped up in our communion with God, what I call going into the sanctuary. And there is one element of communion with, with God that I believe is a vital key to releasing pressure or stress. That key is worship through music, praising God in song. Let me even share some scriptures that show this to be true. During Paul's second missionary journeys, the apostle and his compatriot Silas found their ministry causing a riot, and they felt the brunt of it. Their clothes were torn from them, and they were beaten and thrown into prison. Was that stressful? Yeah, <laughs> you bet. Anxiety? Oh yeah, every legitimate reason for it. But how did Paul and Silas handle it? 
what kept them from breaking? Hmm. Acts 16.25 gives us the answer. But about midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns of praise to God. They turned their focus from the present pressures of their lives to the throne of the sovereign Abba Father, and the tension was relieved. When sheep become tense, nervous, edgy, and restless, the shepherd will quietly move to the flock, and his very presence will release the tension of the sheep and quiet their fears. Their shepherd is there. He will protect them. And this is what happens when we begin to worship our Lord and our God in song. We move into a consciousness of his presence and the tension begins to unravel. The tautness of the pressure eases. Anxieties become meaningless. But we are reminded that he is there. Our Jehovah Shema. Our all-sufficient sovereign God. He inhabits the praises of his people. Psalm 22.3 Songs that stir your soul to worship, songs that bring tears of gratitude to your eyes, songs that cause a throbbing of holy passion for Christ's likeness to swell within your breast, those are the ones that God inhabits as you praise Him. Songs that make you want to fall on your face or leap to your feet also have a physical effect upon your body, bringing sanctified release to physical tension. Singing spiritual songs and making melody in your heart is a good way of delivering you from the stresses of this world. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with songs of deliverance. Psalm 32, 7. Praising the Lord in song during my time alone with Him has drawn me into a deep depth of worship that I have never experienced before. The words of the music are engraved upon the tables of my heart and become an ever-present song upon my lips. Try it. Make it a practice to worship God in song every day. Try beginning your day in song. Put your tape recorder in your bathroom or bedroom and play a worship tape while you're bathing and dressing. Sing in the shower. Carrying tapes in your car or CDs or your iPhone or your iPad. Or use a background music for singing his praises. Play music while you do housework. But above all, make time daily to be alone and do nothing else but worship God in song. The more you enter into his courts with praise and into his gates with thanksgiving, the less you will feel the stress and pressure, the anxiety of daily life. For you will have set your mind on the things above, not on the things that are on earth. For you have died and your life is hidden with Christ and God. You know, when in the Jesus movement, we had Keith Green running around, so <laughs> we, don't ha we didn't have quite the uh, contemporary music challenges that they have now in artists that are possibly crossover without taking the crossover and maybe are doing more for the sake of making money than sharing the word but at one point in time Maranatha Music and Calvary Chapel and a lot of the different early Jesus movement churches all sang scriptural songs and songs that expressed something that we knew inside and we shared it with God and, we, and God was in it. It was anointed, you know, and not just anointed in a way that would be something that you could say, oh, it made you feel like the Holy Spirit was there. But anointing is something that David proved with Saul and God proved with David that lasts a lifetime. I listen to a lot of contemporary music songs, you know, and I've seen them come across the years and most don't last. Oh, sure, you can look up the 10 most popular songs of WOW music or something else. And, you know, maybe you like them, maybe you don't. But, you know, why does Amazing Grace still survive? Why is it powerfully there alive? It's anointed. And there's a difference there because it resonates inside with people that sing it and they hear it and they know it and they realize that God has Amazing Grace for them. And... When you choose your music, sure, you can supplement, change, not listen to contemporary music, but listen to contemporary Christian music. Or you can, you know, try to balance all of it out together, you know, because you've got liberty to do whatever you want to. But those things that mind you and remind you of God, they will take you to a place where, you, just like Kate said, man, as soon as you got a problem, you can sing it out of existence. Not that it disappears, but... You change your perspective and God comes in like a flood with songs of deliverance. Me personally, I have 
in my mind all the praise songs we used to sing in the early days. And there's, they were the, my way of memorizing scripture because I don't go out and memorize scriptures, and yet my wife thinks that I know every scripture there is in the Bible. But frankly, no, we just used to sing them all. And in heaven, it's my personal opinion that conversation is sung, not spoken. And it might not be true, but it sounds good, doesn't it? So today, as God speaks to you, praise Him. You know, if you can't sing, that's fine. Put on a tape and sing with it. But you know what God delights the most in, really? Is out of sudden thought, you're reminded of a song, and you go, wow. Oh. And you start singing. You sing His praises. Not the tape sings His praises. It's not enough to sit there and just listen. You open your voice and you say the words. That is praise. And I can tell you this. If you do it when no one's around, that's fine. God hears. But if you do it, your environment will change. The enemy will flee. Your flesh will lessen the anxieties it's putting upon your spirit. But I can tell you one thing that your spirit will do. It will soar to the throne room of God. And you will be blessed. Sing.